ay mababuklayanin sa harap ng pagsuko huwag kang susuko bigyan ng boses ang sigaw ng masa ang bagong pag-asa ay mula siyo mula siyo mula siyo panibagong pag-asa ay mula siyo Magandang araw mga minamahal kong NSCP student. Ako si Julian Valdo Cubelo at ito ay isang presentasyon tungkol sa gender and development. Ako ay isang full-time na akademiko. Pero bago ako maging full-time na akademiko, ako ay nagtrabaho bilang research assistant, uh, research projects coordinator na ilang mga development projects sa rural areas of Northern Sama. Ako rin po ay merong uh, mahigit dalawang pong taong eksperyensya bilang gender and sensitivity trainer. Okay? So, the goal of this presentation is to help you understand the basics of gender and development which hopefully you can uh, use in your NSTP projects, conceptualization, and implementation whether this semester or next semester. So, let's start. Disclaimers first, this presentation will not be legalese, it will not be legalistic because I am not a legal expert, but I will mention very important sections of two provisions. One is the Magna Carta for Women and later the sexual, the anti-sexual harassment code of the University of the Philippines. But other than that, I will not really go into legal matters uh, because I think this is not the presentation that is right for it. Second, I will not be theoretically hard -bond. There are so many debates about gender and development. I will just give you the basics and I will disclose uh, my preferences, the definitions that I really would like to work with. Third, I will not be statistics bounds, meaning I will not really show you numbers and so on and so forth because uh, I will. And then lastly, I will not be slides bound. If you want to take down notes, you have to listen. You really have to pay attention because my slides are very, very bare. All right. Are you ready? Okay. So, buli ako si Julian Balocbelo ng Departamento ng Pananaliksik sa Komunikasyon or the UP Department of Communication Research at the College of Mass Communication. Ano nga ba ang development? Ang development ay, ah, talagang pinagigyarahan ng develop, ang, ang definition na ito. Pero sa akin, simplihan lang natin. Ito ay maayos at sapat na kalagayan ng pangkalahatang pangbuhay. Kung merong naiiwan, hindi yan development. Okay? Ito ay sustainable. Kahit meron tayo nagagawang sinasabing modernisasyon, merong pagpakalawa, pag pagagawa ng mga tulay, na mga pagbabago kung merong nasisira, hindi sustainable, hindi yan development. Again, kung merong mga human rights na nalalabag, hindi yan development. Ito ay inclusive, ito ay participatory, at mula sa baba, pataas. Ito ba ay end goal? Not necessarily. Hindi siya talagang destinasyon. Dahil kahit doon sa mga sinasabing developed na countries, hindi naman sila tumitigil sa pag develop. Tayo, tinatawag tayo sa Pilipinas na developing countries or third world, pero hindi na masyadong ginagamit ang termo na yan. Pero hindi ito, end goal ito ay proseso at tamang proseso dapat. Dahil kung hindi ito tamang proseso ng pag, uh, uh, pagpunta sa maayos at sa pas, sapat na kalagayan para sa lahat, meron at meron hindi maisasali at merong maiiwan. Okay, so ang aking my favorite analogy for development is a tree growing upward. So, hindi lang siya heroic movement upward with its branch reaching for the trees, but it is also a downward movement, a soulful downward movement that the more you grow upward, the deeper you need to grow also. Otherwise, kung hindi nakaangkla ng maayos ang mga gugat mo sa lupa, ang kahoy na ito, ang punong kahoy na ito ay mabilis na matutumba ko. Merong malakas na bagyo. So here in our you know, interrogation of development, the soulful downward movement really is examining, problematizing concepts that have been normalized, that need to be shaken. So pangkakabog po ng mga nakatagana sa bato ng mga konsepto na pwede naman natin pala i-adapt. Are you still with me? Okay, another thing. My explanation of gender and development really is using the feminist perspective because I am a feminist. It can be explained in many other perspectives, but because I am a 
feminist. That's the framework I love to work with, and I will explain further what my feminism is, because feminism is also a contested concept. All right, so gender and development in Republic Act number 9710 refers to the development perspective you may read with me so that you will not fall asleep, refers to the development perspective and process that are participatory and empowering, equitable, sustainable, free from violence, respectful of human rights, supportive of self-determination and actualization of human potential. It seeks to achieve gender equality as a fundamental value that should be reflected in development choices, seeks to transform society's social, economic, and political structures, and questions the validity of the gender roles they ascribe to women and men, contends that women are active agents of development and not just passive recipients of development assistance, and stresses the need of women to organize themselves and participate in political processes to strengthen their legal rights. So from this section, you know, ito yung mga nahagip natin. Active agents, empowerment, access, equal opportunity, participation, human rights, at tagtagan pa natin, choices. Ito yung hindi passive, hindi lang nakutunganga, at nag-aantay ng uh, mga ayuda, okay? At equal opportunity. Sa akin, really, development is the assurance of survival of everyone, but not just survival, but really quality of life. Okay? Now, feminism. Ano nga ba ang aking feminist? Kwento muna. Okay? Nung ako ay 21 years old, hindi naman talaga ako komportable ang tawagin uh, aking sarili na feminista. In fact, I know many of you out there, you believe in equality, you believe in empowerment, pero feminista, not 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 really, kasi masyadong ano yan, masyadong extreme. So, same thing with me when I was 21 years old, I was a newbie uh, uh, College of Social Work and Community Development uh, in my MA in Women and Development Studies, and I was asked, "Do you feel? Do you think that Filipino women are oppressed?" And I said vehemently, "No, no. Maybe in other countries, but in the Philippines, no. Uh, in fact, matriarchal ang ating society, ang mga nanay binibigay, hindi hindi ang mga sweldo mula sa mga haligi ng kanan. So I don't think so. My experience with my father, with my brothers, are pretty much okay." Okay, so parang okay naman tayo. But at 21, okay, uh, in a literal crossroads at C.P. Garcia and the UP University Avenue, uh, merong 10-wheeler truck, and merong pahinate, merong driver, and then he called me names, making me uncomfortable, uh, trying to get my attention. Tatawagin ako, Marimar, Gina, Rihanna. And it, 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 it's, it did not happen once. It still happens up to this point. Okay, so ang sabi ko, meron naman akong narating sa buhay bilang babae. Bakit? What entitles these men to make me uncomfortable? Okay, there is something about our societal arrangement that makes men entitled to do things to me. Pwede natin sabihin, malayo sa atay, pero there is discomfort. And why am I uncomfortable with it? Bakit natatakot ako para sa buhay ko? There are good days, there are bad days. On Good days, I would say, well, they are overworked, they're underpaid, I can forgive them, they're just trying to get through their day, but in bad days, I might raise my middle finger. So, thus, the interrogation of what I was supposed to, you know, construe as liberation or emancipation, you know, it began, I, I guess, literally in that intersection. But hopefully, you know, uh, the my contention, you know, sabi ko nga dito, my contention is I are, therefore I am. Thankfully, my contention has really expanded. And now my feminism is this equality, equity, standpoint or embodiment, difference or intersectionality. So let me explain further. So we really started with equality. You know, women fought hard to be able to vote. Equality, what's accorded to men must be accorded to women. Gusto nyo ba? At na equality, we want to be joined in uh, PMA, gusto namin uh, bigyan kami ng access to education, to legislation, and so on and so forth. Pero, may backlash ito. Gusto nyo ba ng equality? Kamo, sige. PMA, 100 push-ups sa babae, 100 push-ups sa lalaki. Gusto nyo ba ng equality? Pagsamahin na lang natin ang Olympics, di ba? Wala ng babae, lalaki, kasi magagaling naman tayong lahat. Gusto nyo ba ng equality? Bakit 
you know, you complain when men do not give up their seats in buses. So therefore, it has its backlash. And, you know, because admittedly, it is very, very limited. So thankfully, it has been expanded to equity. And equity really is according, you know, according of resources. And we give more resources to those who have less, to those who really need more. So my favorite analogy is tatao in baray. Tatao is really the breaking of bread, you know, pag tatao ka. And then you give more bread to those who are sick, to those who need, who really work hard for the day, nagtrabaho, naglilis ng bakuran, na exam bukas. And medyo konti lang doon sa nakatunga nga lang mag- and then standpoint embodiment really is about one's position in the world being, uh, you know, the number one indicator for one's experience of the world. So it is anchored in one's skin, bone, saliva, sweat, and blood. Example, if you are a differently able person, you would see a building differently. See? And that seeing of the building is rooted on one's body. If you are not disabled, you would say, where's the entrance to the building? If you are differently able in a wheelchair, for example, where is the rent? Now, standpoint slash embodiment is a very important concept in feminism because this is something our bodies, women's bodies, are a very good starting point in having conversations with the rest of humanity. Babae ka, mayaman, mahirap, meron tayong katabang babae, mag-usap tayo, magkakaintindihan tayo. However, just like equality, it is also very limited. It can also exclude a lot. Some women would say, well, since trans women do not menstruate, they do not get pregnant, I may not have something in common with them, and I may not be able to identify with them as fellow women. So, see, it is important, but it is also limited. Kah- dahil kahit katawan man yan, ang chan ng katawan ng mayaman ay ibang klaseng chan yon, right? At ang chan ng naghihirap na tao ay gutog na chan yun. So, thankfully, we have moved forward to difference and intersectionality and this is really the recognition that oppressions and liberation really come in layers. So, these layers are gender, class, ethnicity, religion, disability, age, skin color, and so on and so forth. But I don't want to go through what is called uh, oppression Olympics. Hindi naman talaga ito pabigatan kung sino talaga ang pinaka-oppress. But you know, just be very basic kasi some people would cry out gender equality, gender equality. Pero serala din naman because they are class blind. Hindi rin nila naman na nare-recognize na may problema din sa class pwede rin mag-api din sila ng ibang tao, lalaki, halimbawa, no? on the basis of class. Ako halimbawa, I'm a feminist, but pwede kong apihin ang aking driver, ang aking gardenero, ang aking tubero, ang aking pool boy, kahit wala naman ako. Oh, diba? Kala nyo mayaman ako. But that's the point. You get the point. I know you got the point. So, uh, deepening this further, equality and equality, I really love this picture, and I think you have seen this picture. Equality and equity, a feminist concept, really is a very good gender and development concept. Also, here, the small, the weak, the disabled need to be helped out in life. And those who are strong, big, and have resources are really are the ones, you know, responsible for giving out resources and allocating their resources to others in the act of helping others out. Diba? So, also, uh, sa usaping embodiment or standpoint, napasok sa gender ang development talaga ang soji. Kaya hindi lang talaga ang gender ang development pang babae or pang lalaki. Ito talaga ay pumapasok tayo sa larangan ng pangkakabog ng usaping sexual orientation, gender and ident- gender identity expression, and ngayong soji you know, sex characteristic. So, an example of this ever-evolving definitions okay, of the body. Sabi ko nga dito, the body is a political arena. Pinag-aawayan yan. There is power in naming and there is also power in unnaming. So, example, the gender bird person from It's Pronounced Metrosexual. It's a, it's a very good uh, website of basic soji orientation. 
this is version 3.3. So here it's very clear, it's very simple. Gender identity is in the mind, the manness, the womanness, the attraction ang ang dinanais mo, ang dinidesire mo, ang inibig mo is here, sexual orientation, so heterosexual, homosexual, and you know, the in-betweens. Okay? And then biology, uh, female, male, and intersex. Okay? What we used to call hermaphrodites. At marami sila. Marami sila sa Pilipinas specifically. Okay? And the expression, the fluidity of the expression, that's really the playful arena of soji. Kung whether you are a man or a woman, you know, your sexual orientation, kung ano man yan, the expression is bahala ka dyan. You know, you might be feminine, you might be masculine. Ako ngayon, nakadangling earrings ako. But in college, I was really emo. I was goth. I was dark. So, alam mo yun, expression is really, really the fun part here. Now, sabi ko nga kanina, it's a, it's a continuing discourse because the body is a political arena. And that version 3.3 right now has, be, has re- really reached version 4.0. So, here, you know, I like the previous picture it's not it's not a linear you know one way direction of femaleness of manliness but you know the more womanly you become here because two directions it doesn't mean nababawasan ang pagkalalaki mo the, the more womanly you become and even the gender expression is also continuing spectrum towards two directions and sexual orientation and even the sexual orientation now is has two components it's the romantic orientation and the sexual orientation so no mahabang usapin niya but it's a point that in gender and development kailangan kailangan natin palawakin ang ating pagtingin sa ating katawan sa ating sexual orientation para wala tayong maiwan that is just the point of this and it it is really rooted on a compassionate concept of embodiment, kung saan ka nang gagaling, importante maintindihan how you are as a person so that how you express it will not be a weapon against you, it will not be demonized so that you will have access to resources, to education, to uh, to be respected, to be protected by the state. Hindi ka mag-Jennifer lang din, no? Kung kompleto ang ating, ang ating gender, ang de- development, walang Jennifer nowadays na mapapatay sa ating bansa or sa ating mundo. And then intersection, siguro pasimpihan natin ng example ng isang may bahay or dalawang klaseng may bahay ngayong pandemya. Ang isang babaeng may bahay na mahirap, you know, because of intersections of gender, class, ethnicity, body, religion, and so on and so forth, or age even, ay imang kaibang may kaiba ang you know, ang uh, katotohanan, ang eksperyensya sa isang babaeng mayaman ngayong pandemya. So, again, the source of, you know, oppression is does not only come from gender oppression. Okay? So, pwede natin sabihin, sino mang aping-ape? Siguro yung babaeng mahirap ng asawa ay ng bububog. Okay? Pero pwede pa natin yan, you know, i- gawin mas most dramatic yung Siguro babaeng single or solo parent na lesbiana na deformed ang katawan. But again, I'd like to avoid oppression Olympics at this point, but you get the point. There is an intersection of oppression that needs to be broken, okay? But then again, the solution also is inter through these intersections, okay? May solution tayo tungkol sa ating class problem, tungkol sa ating gender problem, at, you know, and so on and so forth. Now, gender and development also questions the this divide between the productive and reproductive sphere. A productive sphere, ang ekonomiya sa labas ng bahay, ito yung trabaho, yung ekonomiya, you know, the, the, the GNPs and the GDPs, the total amount of products and services that a country produces, but we often forget the reproductive sphere of the economy, the home where people, workers, CEOs, teachers, students, and the workers, call center agents, uh, are recharged, sheltered, refreshed, nourished, and no workers outside the economy can really function, no one, if there is no re- reproductive sphere that would nourish them. So, napakahalaga, no, kaka- napakahalagang bigyan ng dignidad ang nourishment na ito sa loob ng pamamahay. So, ang, ang example ng gender and development na hindi kompleto, ha? Bibigyan natin ang mga pumumuhay, ang mga informal settlers. Bigyan natin sila, itrain natin sila for hug raising, santo job making, dahil nagkuputuan lang sila maghapon. Pero at the end of three years, tingnan natin ang kalagayan nila. Okay? 
So sa aking experience sa Northern Samar, binigyan ng livelihood na sinasabi. Pero after th- three years, hit ate, hindi pa rin ako bili ng bra. At ang pagbili niya ng lipstick, nabugbog pa siya ng kanyang asawa. Dahil hindi natin nakabog ang reproductive discourses of domestic life. gender roles. Meron na nga siya pag-raising, siya pa rin ang naguhugas, naglalaba, siya pa rin ang, siya pa rin ang nag-aalaga ng bata. So see, even if we become active participants of the productive economy, if our reproductive reality is still unshaken, we're still overburdened and just multiple roles, you know, uh, encumbering, you know, about us, meron pa rin tayong problema sa development. Ano nga ba ang kinalaman ng development sa gender? Sabi ko nga, ang gender talaga sa aking pagpapaliwanag ay naka-angkla sa feminist perspective. So, feminist uh, concepts, equality, equity, standpoint, embodiment, intersectionality. And then yung nasa baba, the, the concepts inside the purple boxes, exclusivity, binaries, double standard, mutedness, privilege, cooptation, backlash, essentialism. Basically, eto yung mga, mga konsepto na ang sarap pag-aralan pag pinapag-aralan mo ang gender and development. No? So, magkakabit siya sa example, uh, exclusivity. It is a gender concept that is also a development concept. example, exclusivity. Marami pa rin hospital ngayon, halimbawa, na pang dinugu ka, okay? hindi ka necessarily patatagit pa sa ER kasi baka ka daw nag-abort. It's a gender issue but also a development issue kasi itong hospital na to exclusive to ito sa mga Kristiyano, sa mga Catholic, meron pang ganyan at meron pang mga mga, mga paaralan na hindi ka pwede mag-enroll kung walang marriage certificate na maipakita na nagpapatunay ng yung mag- mga magulang ay kasal. So see, maraming ini-exclude. Tayo-tayo lang to. Parehas tayo ng pananaw para sa mga moralidad, para sa mga values. So it is gender issue, but it is also a development issue. Another example, um, essentialism. Essentialism, I will not discuss everything because we don't have time. Essentialism, essentializing things as if there is a reified, you know, a reified definition of, say, womanness or motherhood. Parang, nung ginawa ang mundo, nandun ang definition na yun, na ang mother ay ganito, ang woman ay ganito. Diba? So, pag sinabi natin, pag essentialize natin ang motherhood or womanhood as, you know, motherhood is the essence of being a woman, na essentialize natin siya, marami tayong hindi isali. Paano naman ang mga babae na hindi kayo magkaanak or ayaw magkaanak or merong a vow like the religious uh, people na hindi sila magkakanak are they less of a woman? Di ba? Hindi. So, huwag tayo mag-essentialize. Huwag tayo mabilis na mag-essentialize kasi meron at meron tayo hindi maisasali dyan. Therefore, the battle cry for development is not an empty rhetoric. Hindi lang ito pag sinabi kong gender, gender equality, gusto ko lang talaga mahayaan akong mag-umarte. Diba? Ang babaw naman, puro na lang yan, puro na gender, puro na LGBTQ, diba? Hindi. Talagang it is an intersection of issues that are very, very important to be overcome for us to have real development. May pinaghuhugutan po ang konteksto. Another example is sexual harassment. Sexual harassment is a gender issue. So in the UP Anti-Sexual Harassment Code or the UP ASH Code, okay, in Section 5, it is defined as an unwanted, unwelcome, uninvited behavior of a sexual nature or inappropriate sexual advances or offensive remark about a person's sex, sexual orientation, or gender identity. It is very important that it is defined now because dati, pag sinabi mo sexual harassment, baka in-imagine mo lang yan. Sexual harassment kasi pangit, pero kung po, hindi yung sexual harassment. Pwede, no? Noong una, you might, be, you might have been flattered of the attention, of the winking of the eye, but dahil inaraw-araw na, at it is already unwelcome, meron ka ng discomfort, it is sexual harassment. Pero tatanungin ka na naman ulit, na-rape ka ba, na-molest siya ka ba, nahawakan, hindi naman, so guni-guni mo lang yun. Baka hindi yung sexual harassment. But here in the UP Antisexual Harassment Code, 
paragraph 3 that reads, sexual harassment may be a demand or request for a sexual favor by a person of authority, influence, or moral ascendancy in exchange for appointments, grants, grades, or favors. Okay, etc., etc. So see, it is a gender issue because it has something to do with the body. You know, alam mo, merong objectification ng katawan, merong pang mamaliit sa katawan, but it is a development issue because the person being sexually harassed may be in danger of, you know, of being, you know, this uncomfortable and this discomfort may extend into an anxiety at pwede na nga makompromise ang kanyang trabaho, ang kanyang pag-aaral. So, hindi lang siya dahil meron kang discomfort per se, pero nakasalalay ang yung survival, ang yung peace of mind, ang yung quality of life. Paano kung teacher mo yun? Paano kung doktor? Paano kung... Uh, ang tao nito, bossing mo. At kailangan mong tiisin ang discomfort na ito na napaka-sexual ng flavor dahil napakahalaga ng trabaho mo. So see, it is gender-related but it is development-related dahil nakasalalay again ang yung survival, ang yung quality of life. Thankfully, in UP, we have the UP Diliman Office of Anti-Sexual Harassment. They have their Facebook page. They also have an office. But now that we are in the pandemic, the Facebook page is very accessible. We also have the UP Diliman Gender Office, also very helpful if you want explanations about you know, sexual orientations, maybe about yourself, about your friend, about your family, if you have questions, if you want trainings, for instance, you can approach the UP Diliman Gender Office. Okay? Again, as I close this presentation, I will wrap up with this, you know, last points. Gender and development will make sense when the agency and structure really come together. Agency is the individual, the person. We help individual, um, the individual person. So, alimbawa ako ang kapitbahay ko, ah, hanggang grade 6 lang ang natapos, tinutulungan ko siya. Pag gumawa ng cover letter para mag-apply ng trabaho, piniprepare pag Bago mag-interview, pinapahiram ng damit. Talaga, developing the individual. But see, my cheerleading, my mentoring can only go as far. I cannot really change the world for my neighbor because this structure is really very limiting at this point. So yes, cheerleading, individual work really matter, but they can only go as far. For me, really, Gender and development will even make more sense if we expand the structure. Another favorite example is breastfeeding. I am a breastfeeding counselor. Again, I can really mentor women who would like to breastfeed with some padede. Pero dahil our maternity leave used to be 60 days, after 60 days, may iwan na nila yung maanak nila. So, alam mo yung parang kahit ano ang will and determination ng isang tao, ng isang pamilya, kung ang structure talaga ay very limiting. Okay? Hindi sapat ang sipag at tiyaga. Okay? It only is true for the privileged people and a handful only of people in this world. The structure has to accommodate the will and determination. So, dahil thankfully ang ating maternity leave ay na-expand into 90 days. Hindi kulang pa rin yun. Dahil in other countries like Finland, for example, the maternity leave is two years. Pero at least malaking bagay na expand ang structures and policies. Legislations are very, very important. And then lastly, gender and the development also is, should rethink concepts like the trickle-down effect. Napaka-delikado at paso na po ito. Ang trickle-down effect is that, sige, ang resources ilagay natin sa gitna and hopefully magtitrickle down siya sa baba. So halimbawa may pabigas dahil bumagyo. Yung bigas ito ilagay natin sa bahay ng barangay kapital at lalapit naman siya yung mga tao. At you know, hopefully, mabibigyan ng lahat. Hindi naman po yun ang nangyayari, di ba? So, dapat ang resources ay talaga ipamudmud doon mula sa pinakadulo kasi in most cases, hindi po nagtitrickle down galing sa taas. La isa po natin kailangan kabugin ang language, ang discourse. What cannot be named cannot be valued. So, again, balik tayo sa reproductive sphere. Pangalanan natin, i-value natin ang kalaga ng reproductive sphere. Yun ang pangalan ng mga identities, ng sexual identities, gender, ay napakahalaga nun. Sabi natin, nakakapagod. Yun know, yung mga he, she, it. You know, congress, congress person na uh, instead of congress woman. Are this very important? Yes. Yes, because relanguaging, relearning, unlearning, reclaiming, uncovering, declaiming, these are very, very important in the continuous transformation of our mindsets. It works both ways.
also the need to rethink power. What is power? You know, parang uh, dati ang power is power over. You know, power, power to, power to. Hindi yung sapat. Really, power is, should be power with. As and as I close this presentation, I would like to emphasize that power with really is on the burden of those who are privileged. Tayo yun. Collective action ang napakahalaga. Yes, individual work is very important. Let us not ignore the individual. And for the privileged ones, the ones who have purchasing power, the ones na kaya mag-add to cart ngayong pandemya, okay yun. Huwag niyong pabayaan ang individual actions na yun. But collective actions really matter. Mobilization cannot happen individually na hiwa-hiwalay. Ang mobilization, ang collective action ay dapat sama-sama. So our voices being put together really will matter and hopefully from the ground up. Pero sino ang mangunguna? The privileged ones. The ones who have access to resources. The ones who are educated and the ones who are so-called nakakaluwag-luwag sa buhay o merong laman ng utak na nakakapagbasa ng libro. Alright, so let me wrap up. Gender and development is anchored in the feminist concepts of equality or equity, standpoint and embodiment, and intersectionality. Gender and development underscores people's survival and equality of life. Gender should be considered because it is also a development issue. Gender and development means expanding the structure in order to accommodate everyone, lalo na ang nasa laylayan. At dahil culturally embedded ang tingin natin sa gender, meron pa rin po tayong hindi na isasabay. Meron at meron tayo na, you know, intentionally nilalagdag pa rin natin sila sa laylayan. And expansion of structure means collective action. So once you become conscientized, once you become educated, you are now responsible of extending what you know, practicing what you know, and then collectively work with others so that we can move the planet forward. Yun lang muna sa ngayon, mga minamahal kong estudyante ng NSTP. Muli ako si Julian Baldo Cobello. Kung kailangan niyo ako, ako ay nasa Department of Communication Research. Maraming salamat sa TVUP at sa Slides Carnival sa aking PowerPoint templates. Good day at mabuhay po tayo lahat. Bye! Ang boses ang sigaw ng masa Ang bagong pag-asaan